As I begin to end my journey at Universal Studios and bring this run of reviews to a close, I can't help but long for the nostalgic days of the once previous attractions. Alfred Hitchcock, The Art of Making Movies, an entertaining and educational live show studying the master's crafts of filmmaking. Back to the Future of the Ride, while the DeLorean and Time Train still stand, I miss riding the eight-passenger DeLorean, chasing Biff Tannen through the dawn of time. And of course, the big fish that once stood here where I stand, Jaws, where our boat ride comes to a collision with the most terrifying creature of the sea, and tests our primal fear to its limits. All of them, gone forever, replaced by CGI 3D simulators, but the originals? will never forget. It only seems fitting that I close this run of reviews with the most famous and missed attractions of our age. The two giants that made Universal Studios theme parks what they are today. Let's start in Hollywood with the King Kong encounter. The show began when entering the Universal Studios backlot tour in Hollywood, California. While going through the New York backlot, the tram entered a soundstage and stopped in front of an apartment building facade, where guests watch a breaking news report about Kong's rampage on television monitors located inside the building windows. A news chopper is circling overhead with chopper reporter Kelly King, who is covering the story of Kong's escape from captivity. While spotting the tram near dangerous grounds, Kong suddenly swats at the chopper, causing it to come crashing down from above and exploding only a few feet away from the tram. As the tram rounds a corner, it, it drives out onto the Brooklyn Bridge, putting guests at eye-to-eye -eye level with the giant ape in the flesh. The enraged Kong shakes the bridge and rips the suspension bridge cables apart in an attempt to grab the tram, but the tram manages to narrowly escape the clutches of Kong as an NYPD chopper shoots at Kong, distracting him from killing the tourists. The tram exits the soundstage just in the nick of time, and... well, we all know what happens, right? Beauty the beast. So, while only watching several POV camera and press kit footage of this famous attraction, all I can say is, what an achievement. This must have been a blast for tourists all over the world, and for only two and a half minutes, it must have blown their minds. So what's the history of this gem of a ride? Well, I guess it starts obviously where Universal left off with Kong back in 1975. During the titanic battle between Universal and Paramount over the rights on who would get the remake, again, we will get to that, Universal kinda took the turn for the worst and they ended up not doing their remake. However, since the lawsuit was such a mess, the courts decided to give the merchandising rights to the studio while Paramount did the movie. Seeing them stuck with only the merchandise and nothing more, they put the subject on the shelf for the next 10 years, after of which, producer Dino De Laurentiis was in pre-production on the sequel King Kong Lives. This gave Universal an idea, as they were hard at work redesigning the studio to rival Disneyland in order to make more of an amusement park, they decided to do a tie-in deal with Dino De Laurentiis. Dino would put some cash to help finance the ride and in return, the studio would help promote the sequel in effort to promote the ride, but I will say that is in some speculation. Whatever the case may be, the studio started work back in 1985, building a brand new soundstage. Inside was a nightmare destroyed exterior of New York City, which was very damn impressive. Look at the detail, look at the design. There was some very fine craftsmanship in this thing. However, the best piece was Kong himself. The 7 ton, 30 foot tall Kong figure in the attraction was the largest and most complex animatronic figure in existence for many years. Kong was designed by legendary Disney Imagineer Bob Gurr. The detailing was so rich that Kong even had banana scented breath. Now that's what you call dedication. The attraction broke new ground and paved the way for complex theme attractions of today, and was the inspiration behind the former confrontation attraction at Universal Studios Florida. The attraction was also featured in the film The Wizard, starring Fred Savage and Christian Slater which was not only a tie-in promotion for the studio, but for the classic video game industry Nintendo, sponsoring not only the Nintendo Entertainment System, but Super Mario Bros. 3 and... 
Okay, 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 I'm going way too far off the subject. If you really want a good review of both The Wizard and Super Mario Bros. 3, look up these two guys. The attraction opened on June 14th, 1986, and had become a fan favorite for over 20 years. Kong terrified millions of people all over the world, and we just loved him for that. In fact, the attraction made you wonder if Kong made it alive or not. We all were honestly worried about him, but sadly, we found out the worst. On June 1st, 2008, the attraction was completely destroyed by a fire in the early morning. No one really knew who started the fire, but me being a fan of conspiracies, my guess is something, or someone, may have done it in. On June 3rd, 2008, Universal Studios officials had stated that the experience would not be rebuilt, but instead would be replaced by a new contemporary attraction. This had caused outrage among fans of the giant ape, myself included. We were hoping to see our beloved Kong rise from the ashes as he was before, but he rose up in a different light. At the 2009 San Diego Comic-Con, director Peter Jackson officially announced to the public that King Kong would return to the Universal Tour in an all-new 4D attraction with his involvement, and we'll touch up on that next time. Overall, while the attraction is gone, I felt it was a massive achievement in theme park design. Kong looked beautiful, performing viciously to millions of tourists. The animatronic was such a superb piece, I think it would have even made the great Carlo Rambaldi shed a tear. The set of New York and the Brooklyn Bridge were dwelled in such detail, and the best part about the attraction was, well, let's save it for our finale. This attraction gets an exciting 9 out of 10. It looked like so much fun, and I think we all wish it was still around.